Hello, hello, hello. Assalamu alaikum. Jiyanu, pakhair raagale, nihao, chune shume, washmale, ohaya gunzaimis. Guten Morgen. Hi, hugs and hellos to everybody who's tuned into PTV World and are watching World this morning alongside Shazad and Maha Magdoum. Hello, Maha. How are you? Hello, Shazad. Hello, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Um, I'm very good. I had a very relaxing weekend. I spent time at home, had got a lot of work done. How are you, Shazad? Well, uh, obviously on Sundays, you know, the entire family shows up. So we have halwa puri together. That was quite a lot That's of fun That's amazing that well. you guys have still continued that. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Because, you know, it is very necessary for families to be sick together. Yes. And I think it, uh, all the credit goes to parents who've actually managed to make all of us brothers and sisters sit together on a table at least. Well, mm. we do not really sit on a table though. But I mean, we've got this rag scene and then mm. we have to sit over there. So we sit on the floor and that's how we eat. That's and very then nice. the kids fighting and I don't know, there were so many issues. One's fighting over a sword, the other's fighting over a car. Okay. And they all want the same thing at the same time. Well, that's the, but that's just nature. because, you know, <laughs> you, you know, you do not have so many kids all together. Mm. Mm. So you're not used to it. So okay. every Sunday it's quite a hassle and then you have to be on your toes just mm. because of the fact that you want to check mm. whether no kid is missing. So you have okay. to go outside for a while, mm. you know, say to the guard, please make sure that no kid steps so outside. So you have to make the precautions. Because as soon as the ice cream guy is there or the chali wala is there, mm. oh, the way they run towards the gate, I cannot even tell you. Okay, well, so that's, why you, that's why you have gates with the lock on it, so you can always <laughs> lock it. But that's wonderful. It's really nice that you have yeah. a lot of family time. That's the beauty of family and we need to, um, you know, value that. But unfortunately, we're going to get the show started because there's a lot to cover today. Exactly. And unfortunately, over the weekend, there was an attack on the summer van, um, media tank. Um, at, sorry, the what? DSNG. The DSNG, exactly. And it was condemned by the Prime Minister and the information. Information Minister Mariam or Mariam Oranzeb, and this is an attack on freedom of speech. It's an attack on the freedom of press. You know, no matter what the issues are, everyone is speculating as to what happened. You cannot, you know, this is media. You do not attack public voices. You know, they're there to give you a objective or you know some sort of news reporting about what's going on in the world and your country. Yeah. And and Ma, you know what? It's not for the very first time that this is happening over here in Pakistan. Quite a lot of time, unknown assailants have actually tried to do that, mm. just because of the fact that they had their own objectives which they wanted all the media houses or probably the channels to achieve. But you know, inshallah, you know, the type of people we are, the type of people who work in the industry as well, <clears throat> they all know that, you know, we're going to do what we think is right. And our thoughts and prayers to the um, people who lost their lives in this attack as well and those who were injured, we wish you a speedy yeah. recovery. And condolences to the family as exactly. well. Exactly, absolutely. So, um, but in, in other news, because these are things that try to throw us off the positivity of all the progression that's being made. But um, in other news, which is some positive news, the finance minister, um, uh, Mr. Dar has said the stringent measures are being taken for economic turnaround of the country and the PML and government is succeeding in overcoming challenges of energy and terrorism. Um, and in second news, um, Punjab Chief Minister Shabash Sharif has says Pakistan's kidney and liver transplant Inst institute is a unique project which is a milestone in the provision of quality healthcare facilities, which is other great news. It is, a, it, it is indeed a milestone, but I think the Zalmi fans uh, might be a bit troubled because of the fact that Zalmi's performance within the PSL has not been not been that great. Mm -hmm. So Zalmi prevailed in a low-score thriller. Peshawar Zalmi won their second game of the Pakistan Super League against the Lahore Kalandas by three wickets on Monday. Mm -hmm. With the runs almost drawing up in the last few overs of the game, brilliant captaincy from Brandon McCullum mm -hmm. nearly sealed a spectacular victory for his team, but Zalmi prevailed somehow. Wow. Now this somehow is actually what, what is bugging all of those people who are out there. And Zalmi, I think, to be honest, mm -hmm. you know, when they started their own marketing campaign and, mm -hmm. you know, when Every other team was coming out with their own national anthems and songs and whatnot. I think Zalmi did a great job. Yep. Zalmi is my personal favorite at this very moment, even yes. though I'm from Islamabad, because they made sure that Rahat Fatili Khan is going to sing their songs. <laughs> and I love the song as well. Wonderful. And in entertainment news, the BAFTA Awards took place in UK over the weekend. And one of the major winners was La La Land. So do take a look if you get the opportunity. There was some interesting fashion and it was... Seemed like a good night. Ma, when are we going to get an award, man? I mean, it's been so long, we haven't got an award. We haven't even got an invitation to an award ceremony. No, no, because the thing is, your institution has to put you forward for it. Yeah. And no, then no, that's it's not like that, you know. Yeah, you have to be voted once, and nominated. Once, I think we, we have done it even, because when I was working for another channel, I still remember that, mm. you know, the post I was working at, and obviously it was to be on in front of television. Yeah. 
So, and they used to label us with a title. That title was a different title. Well, they used to say, call us VJ. So okay. that means video jockeys. Yes. So back then, we actually had to fight for our right that, you know, why does not VJ have, have a nominee within the award shows as well? Mm. I mean, other hosts has got all their nominees and whatnot, but VJs weren't there. Okay. So I think it needs to be focused on. And, you know, even if they're going to consider an English morning show being the only one over in Pakistan, <laughs> I think we're going to get an award. Anyway. <laughs> yes. This is totally an award no that's great but, um, but with that, but with that I want to pick, pick up on something no, yes, just please. because it's the only show or this is the only platform which makes sure that you know for all those people who understand English mm. you know we do have something for them as mm. a nation but then you know on, on the other half Maha what I mm. see is that there are too many other fields mm. which individuals definitely want to be a part of mm. but then there is lack of institutions in, in mm. that aspect for yep. example whenever we talk about hotel management. Now, a lot of people I've seen, they go to Malaysia, they go to US, they go to Europe yeah. to do all of these courses. And then when they come back, mm. what happens is that people have actually, for all those people who own five-star hotels, not like us, mm. what they do is that they prefer people from the international market. Right. Now, I mean, what's wrong with people who belong to Pakistan, who went outside, mm -hmm. and they were obviously a part okay. of the international market as well. Okay, well, that's exactly what we're going to be discussing today. So it's really good that this has been on your mind, Shazad. <laughs> uh, so basically, you know, I don't think it's that they prefer people from abroad. I think that there is a different level of uh, commitment. There's a different work ethic that is involved and a different kind of, yeah, commitment. Yes, I can see your face and you <laughs> disagree, but we're going to, we have someone who's very capable, very apt, and a very good guest for today. And we're very honored to have him here and we're going to be discussing all these things because he is an expert he's seen the industry in Pakistan uh, flourish um, maybe let's see if in a positive way but we have been joined yes yeah he's a chef he's an entrepreneur he's been a part of the hotel management industry himself he's, yes. uh, he's been leading the you know the largest group over here in Pakistan so I think all of these questions which we need to ask we'll the just right ask guests. him we'll pose pose to him that sir you know okay do you think this is this way or not because me and Maha, we love to disagree. Yeah, absolutely. So we have been joined by Mr. Toki Ahmed, who, like Shazad said, he is a hotelier, he's an entrepreneur, he's also a chef, and he owns six restaurants, and is opening three more as well. Asalaamu Alaikum, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure for us as well. Now, there's a huge topic to cover here, but Shazad, I'm going to let you start with the first question. Yeah, so, so that's what my first question is. So first of all, we do know that, you know, we do have a lack of institutions where we can go and study hotel management. We do have people, but I think that'll be correct of us to say that they're just, you know, all of those Try. people whom you get at the side of the road, for example, or those dentists which you get by Poriyumala Pol or something of that sort. I'm sorry, I'm not, I do not want to shame anybody, but this is how things are. And even if there's an institute, people over here or the industry over here do not recognize that degree because they think, oh, if you've learned it from here, mm -hmm. what's the point? So, yeah, let's, let's start from here. I agree on one thing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we don't have any uh, hotel restaurants, institutions. Uh, we do have uh, platforms mm -hmm. which is given by the five-star, mm -hmm. four-star hotels, where you can have <clears throat> your bachelor or your, your master and then you can join those hotels <clears throat> and become and do your internship and slowly, slowly, you, gradually you move up. <clears throat> That's the one, only thing in Pakistan. We have one or two, three, as he said, Poriwala mm. schools and um, uh, where uh, they take money from kids mm. and teach probably nothing. Okay. If I'm not uh, mm. mistaken. Mm. But yeah. But the rest, the people go abroad, they go to yeah. Europe, they go to America. Okay, well, uh, with your background, you have studied abroad. You uh, did a most of your, you, you know, your qualifications from really big institutes in America, and then you came to Pakistan. Now, since you started your career in Pakistan, how have you seen um, this, the service industry, especially with the hotels and the restaurants? Which direction have they gone, and do you think they've gone in a positive direction, or are we going towards a neg like? I was what recruited by, <clears throat> I was already there, I was, uh, I was director of food and beverage, mm. <clears throat> and they recruited me from uh, Baltimore, mm. Maryland, Hashwani Group. <clears throat> Since, uh, at that, I'm talking about 94. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, after that I came, I left, I went back and went to CIA Colonial Chef of America, mm. and I became certified chef. <clears throat> I was already working in the front of the house, mm. but I wasn't working in the back of the house. Okay. These are two different uh, arenas. Okay. Um, for me to learn this, I had to go back and learn the cooking. Okay. <clears throat> I knew the management, 
Mm. But that was the front of the hostel management. Right. And then again, they brought me back. Uh, things have changed. Right. And especially lately, in the past four, five, six years, yeah. new hotels are being built. Absolutely. And they're coming really rapidly. They're yeah. coming, they're popping up. Right. And they're good hotels. Mm -hmm. But uh, before, uh, when I came, there were only two or three hotels. Mm -hmm. uh, one or two in Karachi, one in uh, Lahore. Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, was uh, part of the laying foundation of uh, Gwadar and uh, Muzaffarabad. Right. I designed mm -hmm. uh, some of the, most of the restaurants in uh, Hashwani groups. Okay. Uh, I designed, I designed, designed like a design. Okay, yeah. Uh, from <laughs> the beginning and up to okay. the point where we recruit people and everything. I right. teach, I teach in cooking, I teach outside. Okay. But now the changes that you asked, mm. yes, the positive changes, especially since the economy is, mm. is changing mm. and the money is coming, uh, stock exchange is going up, yeah. uh, people can see the changes in, in, in our country. Mm. That is also helping our industry. Okay. But again, going back to this question, mm. still we don't have a school. Okay, but now tell me, you said you knew the front of the house, then you went back to culinary, culinary school, yeah. and then you learned about the back of the house. Now, how important is it for someone who is deciding, maybe like Shazad said at the beginning, um, in you know starting their career, that it's important to have the proper education and to know both the back and the front in order to be successful? If you wanted to, <clears throat> if you want to run 100 mile, that's the, the recipe. Okay. You need to know back and back. And if you just want to run 10 to 15, 20 miles, mm -hmm. then you only learn one side of the industry. Okay. Right. So uh, if you want to move up to, to the GM carrier, mm. you need to know the back of the house, front of the house, okay. housekeeping. You got to know the whole it's, it's, it's like a science. I was just talking to him. Oh, okay. okay. I, I, I will totally agree to this. But now, now I've, I've got another point. Now, that point is, now, for example, you just said that the economy is booming. You know, there's five-star hotels popping up everywhere as well. So don't you think that we'll be in need of people? So I think yes. that this mm -hmm. is about time that people yes. really need to practice themselves that how it's going to be. I mean, for example, the service industry for the last decade has been one of those very lucrative industries Absolutely. where people have actually invested money true. and have made money other than software and applications development. Very, very so true. now where do you think all of these institutions are going to pop up from? Because people are probably investing money in hotels and elsewhere or stock market. Nobody's investing on the institutions. Uh, For the people. Uh, that's a good question. Mm. Thank you. I uh, Honestly, I, I would love to open uh, a corner school mm. if I have time. Uh, I also work as a consultant. Okay. <clears throat> uh, the reason uh, we don't have enough people in this field, and that's the reason all the hotels, mostly if you go into five star, you will see a white face, mm -hmm. yeah. especially on the GM helm, mm -hmm. uh, uh, because we don't have people. Okay. Uh, and if we do even have, then the owners have this this complex. Okay. Being a, a second class citizen, okay. that they prefer those. Okay. Uh, guys. Okay. Right. But why do you think that is the case? Um, that people are opting for people, you know, um, you know, people from abroad. Owners think it looks good. Right. It looks good. That's all. Right. They're not hiring uh, brains. Mm -hmm. They're hiring faces. Okay, and uh, now in regards to the face of the hiring, so the people, like Shazad said, uh, it's about investing in the people as well, because that's where the service industry yeah, is going absolutely. to boom. Now, the people that are working in these restaurants and hotels, where are they getting their training from? I mean, when you started, yeah. when you came back in 94, where are they being trained from then till now? It's all on the floor. Okay, it's all it's in right house. There. Okay. It's right there. Like Shazad, if he has done his bachelor or master's, mm. he comes to us, he can speak, uh, mm. the, I mean, good English. That's mm. another criteria. Right. You need to speak English. That's right. another plus. <laughs> That's a plus plus. Okay. Uh, if you don't, then you don't have chance. Okay. Basically. All right. No, no. But, but I think what uh, Maha was trying to ask over here was, for example, I know that since we have got people from Hashwani Group who have represented us, uh, represented the group over Sina here. Sina Group. Hashwani yeah, group. and they told us that you know they've got their own institution. Absolutely. They, they give yes, training they to people. They're, you know, there's in-house training as yeah. well, and then there's training on the floor because that's how we Pakistanis have, have been groomed. Yeah. That you know, once we are put to a mission. That's when we start learning and then that's how we progress. That's how, you know, our ladder goes on. 
but now in days to come since you said that you know if you will have time you know you you are a very socially responsible guy as well okay. you know you you're doing consultancy you have six restaurants mashallah now you're planning to open up another three why not one school i i tried i applied uh, uh this huge like this paperwork mm -hmm. uh, to open this i did like 80% mm -hmm. and then i got tired okay. so there's just 20% left then i think we can probably do it i got together. really tired okay. it was like it was like office after office i'm mm -hmm. like okay okay that's, so it's that's a, one reason okay now do you think that okay so you try to go down the um, education route in regards to the service but we do teach okay so you teach uh, yourself um we what teach, we teach uh, as we take we take kids mm -hmm. young kids like right now i have taken few girls mm -hmm. already after they finish their 6 uh, to 9 months yeah. they have gone to serena okay. uh, they have gone to married they have gone to other restaurants they have gone abroad okay. some of the kids are in europe some of the kids are in in saudi arabia and uh, in, okay. in middle east that's great the oh, all no. kids are gone up Okay, wonderful. Now, uh, one thing I have noticed is that uh, the service industry varies from city to city. True. You have a you know international overview yeah. on the industry as well. Now, why do you think that is? Because in Lahore, the service industry is. I'm sorry, Islamabad, but the service industry is much better than the people in um, Islamabad. True. You know, they Even the, in Karachi, customer yeah. service, Karachi's people, you know, people care that you are either enjoying your food or you're getting your water in time or et cetera. You know, it's a small things. As a capital, why do you think we're falling behind, especially when we are calling in the international <coughs> experienced uh, managers and we are have we have got the in-house training? Why are we not at that level? Of I've Lahore? got a reason to that as well, but after you. Yes, yeah, so after the experts. Things, things I, I to begin with, I fully agree mm -hmm. with your assessment, Great. Uh, uh, but it's changing in Islamabad too, <laughs> honestly. Right. I mean, I used to have uh, no competition, mm. now it's over my head. Right, and okay. Restaurants are coming like, they're racing yes. to open the doors. Yes. Yeah. And, and by doing that, they're missing the point. Yes, exactly. They are, uh, they're not really focusing on, uh, uh, like, they're not really training kids. Yeah. Uh, I take a lot of kids from the Fata side. Okay, great. And uh, the KP. Mm -hmm. That's my main source. And plus Mari and uh, and uh, and uh, Nathagali, Kashmir. Wonderful. A and these kids come and we really train them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I cannot, I cannot imagine having a kid on the floor mm -hmm. if I don't like. If my, I see him, I'll call my manager. Okay. And that day, manager won't sleep home. Right. They won't go home. Okay. Because it was like it's not possible. Mm -hmm. But it's because me working in the field. Okay. But the people, those who are opening the doors, mm -hmm. they are young kids mm -hmm. with a lot of money. Right. And uh, they, they think it's, it's like showbiz. Right. <laughs> oh, the girls are coming, the guys are coming. Mm -hmm. It's all PR and everything. Mm -hmm. Not realizing it's all about food. Absolutely. Yeah. As you said. Mm -hmm. so if you want to come over there, you want your water on the table within 10 to 20 seconds. Yeah. If it's not there, you slowly, slowly, your, your temperature is going to go up. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to maybe shout. Yeah. And uh, you see a lot of times people raise hands and they, they, they shout and, and mm. that's what happens. So uh, what really lacking is, mm. what exactly you said, mm. that people are spending, investing money mm. on, the, on, the, on the layout, furniture, looks good. Mm. But no yeah, yeah, but that's, and I can name so many restaurants right now that have that, but that. I'm not going to yeah. because I know a lot of the owners. <laughs> Why so do people do start that. going to them? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, uh, but then they can see themselves and they can maybe get some feedback. So let me share my own reason as okay. well. So okay, what happens since I've lived in Karachi as well for five, six years, and then I've lived in Lahore for two years, and then since Islamabad was my hometown, so I, can, I think I can do a very fair analysis. Okay. So okay. what happens is that if you start walking down the line from Karachi to Lahore and then Islamabad, all you need to think is that the lead is coming down. That's, that's what it is. Because in Karachi, what happens is the life is so fast, it's so quick, the decision making is just uh. so apt that people do not actually have time. Even if you go to their place, mm. they'll be like, okay, I'm busy, you know, I have to leave. Probably you can have, have a cup of tea with my mother, but I won't be able to give you time. Mm. What happens when you come to Lahore? In Lahore, people are earning to eat food. Mm. They're not earning to invest on property. They're not earning to invest on industry. They're not doing anything. Definitely. And over there, women do not even cook. In Lahore, there's it's it's not a very common practice. It's not a very common practice, but on weekends everybody will go out. They love to eat, and that's how they are. Lahore, Lahore, mm. and that. But you know what they'll do is they will take out a bit of time for you. Mm. That bit of time will be there. So in all of that, 
what happens is when you come down to islam walk people mm. are sleeping by 9 in the night mm. so they're like man come on i mean half of the time when i get friends from karachi and all you know what they say mm. how do you guys even live over here we do love the serenity of the town as well we okay do, we do love our peace mm. but then we are not that fast in the decision making even when we speak even when we walk people from islam walk You can realize from way far beyond that this guy is from Lahore. This okay. is from Islamabad. So basically, you're saying they're slower than the rest of the city. Uh, the mm. rest of the I mean, if you want to put it that way, well, that's mean, what you're you saying. Can, <laughs> that would have that would have actually In saved us nice, another two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what do you what do you what is your assessment on this? Because you know these are hustling, bustling cities, but Islamabad is still the capital. We do need to step up the level of quality of service. Everybody's a boss here. So I'm, how do we? I'm, I'm impressed it? by his uh, his analysis. <laughs> okay. So what? How do we fix this? Then? <coughs> uh, the, the last part was very true. Mm. It's a very laid-back city. Okay, okay, but that's fine. It might be laid no, back. No, yeah. The reason I'm saying is okay, this. Okay, yeah. I, I, I was in PAA. Mm. Uh, I was advisor to the to the MD mm. PAA then when Triple Seven came, mm. and I was living in Karachi. Plus, I was managing PC Karachi and married Karachi and everything. Mm. He is right, honestly. Mm. It's the tempo of life. Mm. It really counts. Okay. It really counts. Right. Uh, I'm not saying anything good or bad. Right. I'm just saying people here, they are they are in the government jobs and mm. and a lot of bureaucracy, uh, a lot of uh, paperwork. Like uh, like and and people are are laid back. Mm. But it doesn't give the the excuse as mm. you the question was mm. the bad service or anything like this. But also as I said, we don't have institutions. Mm. Coming back to the same, mm. we don't have institutions in Pakistan. Any institution. Right. There was one institution somewhere. Back one or two, but again, Hashwani Group have their own. Right. They train their own kids. Then the kids goes into the hotel mm. and they work on the floors right. and they start learning. And that's also very good way of learning something. Because yeah. yeah. I I was the first Pakistani to be graduated from CIA. Yeah. And uh, I was surprised because I was a bit older compared to the rest of the students. Mm. But everybody was so in love mm. what they were doing over there. Yeah. And when I came back in uh, '99, I really started. Teaching my executive chefs. Okay. And now all the students, those who were like bus boys with me, mm. now they are executive chefs in each and every five star. Oh, wonderful! Wow. That's see, so this is what I wanted to talk about. Now, you know, we talk about all this prejudice and discrimination against our own citizens, which is, you know, a very, you know, this is a situation that happens here. Now, like you said, you trained the people that you brought on board. You. Train them in the sense that they could work themselves up the ladder. They could, you know, there was a career for them. You basically created a career out of, you know, maybe waitressing and etc. Now these days, do you think the new kids that are coming in, they have this vision to create long-term jobs, or do you think it's more of that? Let's open a restaurant because we have some money, we have some time. Do you think they have the right attitude? One more thing I want to add. Please. Ninety-nine when I came, we had a zero. Female in our kitchens. Mm. Now, what's the situation? Now you go see. Okay. I was the first one to bring in. I convinced the head of Hashwani Group. Mm. I said I need female on the floor. Yeah. And and he he supported me. And then from from the front of the house, I took them back. Mm -hmm. Now the girls are working in the kitchen. Great. And you can go and you can see them there. And they are earning respectable, good money. Okay. Good means good. Yeah. <clears throat> Not just few thousands. Okay. And. Uh, uh, The kids, those who are going into the five-star setups, mm. they are really working hard. They are very smart kids. Okay. Pakistani, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> uh, Pakistani are very con smart. Yeah. They're really they, when they, when they go somewhere, yeah. even more than uh, yeah, street more than smart. Street, yeah. yeah. They even in, in like the the kids, those who are in, they are failure in Pakistan. Mm. But the moment you ship them to Europe and America, yeah. And after five years, you call them. What are you doing? Nothing. I'm running three restaurants. Yeah, they I'm have. I'm a doctor. I'm engineer. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> well, it's the op opportunities that are provided. Uh, why is that so funny, Shazad? No, why are you laughing at everything? It's not the opportunities. I, it's all about that. You know, I can relate to that. I okay. mean, I've got my cousins as well. I've got a family who've lived in Pakistan. Majority of them wanted to go to. You know, UK probably or in US, and the moment when they were going, mm. you know, even their parents weren't even talking to them. Mm. Oh, you're a failure in life. You can't do anything. True. So all they had, whatever money they had, the parents just gave it. Okay, do whatever. Now when you go, call them, oh, can you send me like this much amount in dollars? Oh, bro, hey, it's coming. Okay. No problem. The What good businessman. Yeah, mm. very good businessman. Yeah. They started like uh, very common business in, in USA, mm. like Pakistanis. They own petrol pumps. Right. Yes. Exactly. That's what we call them gas stations. Yeah. yeah. We don't call them petrol pumps. Yeah. How many do you have? Ten. How many do you have? Twenty. Yeah. I mean, it's like. 
So, okay, so now, <laughs> Why so, did we come back in 99? <laughs> yeah. Okay, but that's the thing. So there are really viable options, um, you know, for potential actual careers. Now, for all those youngsters who are looking to find maybe mentorship or education in this industry, what would you recommend to them to do? What would I just, had a, I just had a had a uh, uh, chat with the Roots mm -hmm. kids, and we offered them. I and and we whoever. I mean, one thing kids need to know, yes. it's really money-making profession. Right. If they think like, you know, being an engineer or doctor, mm. uh, my niece, she just joined uh, uh, Maruf. Mm -hmm. And yesterday I was asking her, how much money you are making? Mm. And she's a doctor. She did her uh, house job in uh, PIMS, 45. Mm. She broke my heart. Mm. I'm like, how much? She yeah. said, 45. I didn't say anything mm. because I didn't want to give her that impression. Yeah. I went outside and I spoke to my mother. I'm like, after all these years, mm. she's making only 45. Mm. My waiter makes 45. Yeah. My waiter, who's who's not even hardly mm. uh, metric. Yeah. So it's a money-making profession. Uh, the kids, those who really wanted to learn this thing, especially, I would I, I would recommend going to the kitchen. Okay. Learn kitchen first. Okay. And then you can come outside. And, uh, okay, now the attitude that one needs to have in order to, you know, because like Shazad, I, you know, I'm sorry, I'm going to pick on you now. Like Shazad said, you know, like, oh, even women don't even cook in Lahore, you know. So how, what kind of attitude do you have to have no, no, he, to go I, in? I don't mean to support him, but what he's saying oh, is... Oh, everyone yeah. does, that's See? fine. No, no uh, like the people like, they're very outgoing people. Yeah, that's, that's how it was. I mean, otherwise, Lahori, their kabas, their foods in home. Yeah. They they have the best food. I mean, if you want to eat krela gosht, who's going to cook better than that? <laughs> exactly. But you know, at you the know, same time, there's one more... Chole, who's going to cook better than that? <laughs> yeah. Not Karachi. It's Lahore. But again, over the weekend, everybody's out. Everybody's out. They love, yeah. they love going out as well. But you know, since we need to wrap up the segment as well, one last thing which I would want you to say to all our viewers Please. who are out there, and that is that since you... You're, you're a thumb of the industry over here in Pakistan as well. You were the first one to, be, to have been graduated from the school. Now, you have to convince them and say to them that there's plenty of space within the service industry in these, these areas, and this is about time that you can probably go and pick up on the courses which you wanted to do and come back and serve the nation. Go ahead. That's your camera over there. Okay. As an uh, expert. I, uh, anybody who has done their 12th grade, mm. please, if you want to go into hospitality, the world is hospitality. Mm. Uh, go to any good restaurant, go to any good five-star hotels, try to get internship mm. and work there for nine to 12 months. That's all it takes. Okay. And, and one last thing, sorry. I'm, I'm going to ask this thing because I always wanted to. Why do we always have women at the front desk? In five-star hotels? Why do you know hotels? why? I'm just asking, why? Just like uh, our hoteliers think the white face works better than the brown face. Oh, so that's, that's honestly, what the mentality yeah, is. It's a gender prejudicism. Yeah, All absolutely. Right. And this you is don't have to have, it doesn't matter, like you both are the same. Mm, exactly. Yeah. It doesn't make... And yeah, this is a universal uh, issue, like as in this no, whole... No, no, it's Pakistan issue. No, no, but even Indian, abroad... Pakistani, Bangladeshi, Nepalese, mm. in this region. Oh, really? That's, it's more prevalent here? Yeah. Okay, well. interesting. For the hotels? I yeah. thought it was abroad as well. Okay. No, I haven't seen it abroad though. You, I mean, you, you go into the hotels Pakistan. and you see the all the GMs over there. Mm. from the Europe. Yep. The reason they are working here, they can't find a job in Europe. Okay. Those white guys. Oh gosh. Not, okay. not to be prejudiced to exactly. them. Okay. Honestly. Great. Thank you so much for your time and thank you so much for Thanks discussing you. the industry Hello. here. So guys, that was talking about the hospitality industry within Pakistan with our expert and very seasoned guest, uh, Mr. Toki Ahmed. Uh, so do check out uh, all the hotels and, yeah. and the restaurants he's running. And you know, great. everybody knows about this for this as well. So best of luck for you, the you know, next three Thank restaurants. You, and one of your restaurants is right next to my house as well. So I'll probably show up whenever you're there, have free food. But <laughs> right now, ladies and gentlemen, we need to go for a short break. And when you guys come back, we're going to discuss another career, which is not related to the service industry, but sort of, I think. Yeah.
Welcome back, everyone. And before the break, we were talking about the hospitality industry within Pakistan and what was happening and what's going on. And we had a wonderful guest, Mr. Toki Emma, to discuss it. And, you know, you need experts to discuss it. And like Shazad said, you know, that was a service industry. It's about providing a service to your customers and making them happy. Yeah. Now, there's another service that people yeah. provide, which is a service of education. And then these kids that are in those institutions then go on to serve us as human beings. Yes. Yeah. So that was my link, so I, I think that was a great link Thanks. too as well. And, you know, I'm going to Wave share my approval. experience of this industry, which we're going to discuss. So when I was about to, uh, you know, when I decided that I'm going to do Bachelor's of Business Administration, somebody, you know, was a consultant and he, he sat down with me and told me that, you know, international relations is going to be a field and industry in days to come. So why don't you pick up on that? It was like, I mean, <laughs> you know, thank God I've got my admission. So, you know, all I'm going to do is pray to Allah that, you know, I can probably pass through the course as well. That's right. what it is. But now, ladies and gentlemen, when we look at it, international relations is an industry, it's a field which is very lucrative and people are really bulging onto it as well, well because they want yes, to learn. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I did a form of international relations. I did global affairs for my master's. So, you know, it's... I clearly haven't utilized, you know, haven't jumped on the bandwagon as I should have because like you, Shazada said, it is a booming uh, field and it is something that's very relevant because we are living in such a globalized community or village. Global village is what everyone yeah. keeps saying. Um, very, you know, interesting. Well, I think uh, I was always inquisitive of, of the fact that, you mm -hmm. know, what is international relations? What do they teach you in international relations? So that's what we're going to discuss today. Mm -hmm. We've got very less time right now. So yes, I think let's just do it quickly. Exactly. So we've been joined. Because we started talking quite a lot. I know. <laughs> oh, we? Talk about yourself. No, I'm kidding. We had, uh, okay, so we've been joined by Anam Fatima. She is teaching international relations at Qaeda Azam University. She has also studied it from NDU herself. Assalamu alaikum. Good Waalaikum morning. Assalam. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, so, Pablo, quickly tell us about what is international relations and what do you study in it? Uh, international relations actually it's an interdisciplinary field mm -hmm. in social sciences. Interdisciplinary. Uh, in right. social sciences. In yeah. social sciences. Mm -hmm. And it actually uh, it's a study of global system like mm -hmm. you were saying you, have, uh, did, you did your masters in global affairs. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a study of international system mm -hmm. uh, of states. and the nature of relationships of uh, between states and non-state actors. So that's okay. something which we do get from the name. But mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you mean by that, you know, there are different disciplines within one discipline from right. the social sciences segment? That's, what are those disciplines? That's a very good question. Thank you. Uh, I would like to uh, say it's... Uh, oh, I'm asking too many good questions. No, no. <laughs> All right, let them answer it. <laughs> it's, it, it, it allows the students to study the various subjects that complement uh, in other field of social sciences. Like there are DSS, defense, defense and strategic studies, mm. but IR complement uh, the various subjects mm -hmm. uh, within this. Like it includes the uh, study of American history, European history, okay. and it will help students of uh, foreign services who would like to opt for CSS. Mm. So uh, that's the main reason okay. the students currently Because are opting for IR in social sciences. Because it, it goes on to so many different fields as well. Uh, exactly. Okay. It's, it's Now, um, okay, so that's the significance of it. So tell us, okay, now that's the importance, but going deeply into the significance of international relations, mm -hmm. why is it a subject that students should be considering to study? Apart from the interdisciplinary, what are they going to benefit? What kind of career opportunities are there for them? Uh, this is what I was telling you. Mm. The students, uh, uh, once you are not doctor, you are not an engineer, mm. you are like you don't have any career in society. Mm. So uh, international relations is uh, above in all the other fields in social sciences just because of the students and the youth of uh, uh, current. They are more interested in uh, being so, uh, uh, like CSS. Okay. Anyone you can ask, they are like, we are opting for CSS, CSS. Yeah. So it will help you a lot for uh, opting your CSS. It has to 200 marks now. Right, okay. CSS, oh, yeah. can we just, yeah. CSS is? It's got 200 yeah. marks. Yeah, last so year it, it was. It's like an entire subject. Exactly, last year it was of 100. Okay, wait, oh. CSS, what's yeah. CSS? Civil service. Civil service. Okay, civil yeah. service. That's what it is. I mean, that's very beneficial you for all those people who, are actually, who actually want to do CSS and, and think, You know, 200 marks is good, good news, bros. Okay. But you know, IR, I, I do, it's a course which you get in masters, right? Not mm -hmm. even in bachelors. No, and he's it. offering in, in BS also. Oh, okay. really? Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's now, good news too. okay, mm -hmm. so you've mentioned, you said a couple of subjects which are offered within international relations. Okay. What are the other subjects? So you learn American history, European history, 
international law. You also uh, study in this strategic studies mm -hmm. and uh, uh, foreign policy analysis. Foreign, uh, okay, great. And then uh, the environmental and energy okay. sustainability. Okay. So, okay, now when, okay, so basically when you are teaching the subject, how in depth do you go with each topic that you've, you've listed just now? How it, much does a student actually learn? It's it's up to like uh, we have specifically IR, mm. so we focused on the foreign policy analysis. Mm. We'll go for uh, diplomacy rather than going in defense in, and strategic studies. We just mm. give the introduction of international law and all this stuff. Okay. All right. Now, Great. what I want to ask is, what career? Op I mean, mm. Mahad did ask that, but you know, after yeah, CSS, we didn't. <laughs> after CSS, we didn't move on. Mm -hmm. So, what other career opportunities do we have? And our uh, do you think that people over here, or the corporations over here, they're looking for people who have done IR? And why you specifically, after doing IR, ended up teaching? Because it was your hobby? That's fine, if it was. But other than that, was it a bit of difficulty to look around for a career which was you know, healthy and developing and you thought that it's going to progress? Definitely, you cannot escape the difficulty in finding any career opportunity. Mm. Yeah. Either, <laughs> that's true too. Yeah, that's very true. That's Either very you important. are a doctor or you're your engineer. Absolutely. You have to uh, really do work. something. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I won't say there is only a career as a uh, faculty member or mm. uh, there, are, uh, there is a lot of career opportunities. The career possibilities include being a journalist or mm. in media. You mm. can see uh, the people working from. Yes, hello. <laughs> you are, <laughs> you are the good <laughs> example of this. Uh, mm. An example, and, yes. <laughs> yeah, example. <laughs> and uh, then there is a career in uh, diploma. Uh, uh, you can be a uh, ambassador also, mm. ambassadorship also in foreign services. Mm. Apart from foreign, foreign services, you can be a journalist in public relation mm. and you can work for uh, environmental uh, sustainability mm. in global issues in NGOs. Mm. There is a lot of scope for our okay. students of IR, the graduates of IR. Okay, excellent. So that's, there's a lot of opportunity. The thing is, you know, Shazam, what I think it is, is that it's a lack of awareness and lack of uh, research. This is Definitely. why people think that, you know, they focus on those main jobs because it's so clear cut. And, you know, we don't like to break away from the norm. <laughs> I'm going to disagree over why? here. Why? Because over here, I mean, I'm sorry that I will have to be a bit pessimistic. I'll sound like that, well, but I'm really not we'll that type of a person. I want to, you, you to be positive in life. Mm. I want to give out all of those positive vibes as well. Mm. But it's not about whether you do bachelor's in business administration or you're a doctor or you're an engineer mm, or exactly. you're an aeronautical engineer or whatever you've picked up on mm. or you've done IR. Yeah. All it comes down to is, I mean, I'm going to be honest over here, you is your to. PR. Okay. That's what it is. That's what my point is. So half of the time, I mean, even if you, because you know, you are over here sitting in a very amazing capacity because you are the one who's convincing quite a lot of heads over okay. there that this is what you can opt for. Mm -hmm. But then just imagine for somebody as a Pakistan, if it's so difficult to find a job, mm -hmm. how do you think that we can show them all of those stars that, okay, yeah, we might be an ambassador. Mm -hmm. Okay, CSS then. I mean, it's just daydreaming. I no, think, what I see, I th see, the I'm field is good. That's not what no, I'm no, saying. No, no, I'm going to disagree with you that. Yeah, so I'm going to agree with you to a certain mm. degree. Now, when someone is opting for these roles, um, mm. it's not about PR. It's about being uh, guided into jobs and like applying for jobs, the mm. certain words you use, how to project yourself. Now, within IR, like that's mm. what, even within psychology or even within uh, medicine, you don't... Definitely, you have to work for. Uh, yeah, to get so to now work. how do you get clarity as in how do you figure out what your strengths and weaknesses are within the subject so you have a clearer idea which direction to go in within the field? Yeah. Because, because like you said, there's so many uh, areas <coughs> one can go into. Yeah, I can, uh, it's all, it's all about, about your own capacity. Like mm. I have capacity in teaching, mm. so I have opted for a faculty member. Excellent. So I didn't go for CSS or mm. anything like that in media and all that okay. stuff. Okay, well you know what you wanted to do, exactly. There's exactly. nothing wrong with teach. teaching. This is how we're going to get the next generation forward, etc. So, and you know, that's a very admirable and honorable uh, job you so that you're doing, absolutely. We need our teachers mm -hmm. and ones that can actually talk and as I well. And I think it's, it's only the teachers Teachers in England as well who are actually labeled as sir. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, I think teachers and then doctors. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So now going forward, when, uh, when you have a student, how do you guide them saying, well, once you graduate from your mm -hmm. bachelor's, these are the field, these are the opportunities open to you. Mm -hmm. What would you say to them? Uh, I suggested them according to their own capacity and capability mm. and most of the youth, uh, what I have seen being an education youth ambassador and a teacher as well, mm. they are more interested in research <coughs> and analysis. Okay. So I have suggested them to go for uh, various <coughs> think tanks in Islamabad, okay. specifically in Islamabad there are uh, lots of think tanks and IGOs and NGOs. Okay. 
So they moved towards that. That's a wonderful step as well, actually going through an NGO and think tanks, especially if you're just fresh graduates as well, because it's easy not to take that much money when you're But as an fresh education graduate. youth ambassador, what do you actually have to do? There are a lot of activities. For like, example? Like... Um, Let's have one example because we are running <laughs> two, out of three. time. Just two, three. No, no, we have like, time Because I never knew that we, that we do have, have an education youth ambassador as okay, well. Okay, so like, just give us, just quickly list us a couple of... Um, like we actually. have to uh, give our suggestions in form of presentation mm -hmm. and or in any um, in form of article uh, for national education policy of 2016, for instance. So that's all. Okay, we wonderful. Go. Thank you so much for your time. We've actually thank run so out of time. Thank, but you, so thank you. And for all those who want to do IR, it's a very good topic and it opens up your mind a lot. But today, Shazad, fruit of the day is... Yeah, but before we move on towards the fruit of the day, vegetable. it's the vegetable, vegetable first of, of all. And then there's one thank more thing which I want you to say, and that is no matter what you do, please make sure that you put in that hard work which it requires. Oh, yeah. That's what it is. And the rest, Allah will guide you to the best. Exactly. And so quickly, so it yeah. is. Moving on to the vegetable of the day, and it is better melon. Yes. So also, a.k.a. karela. Yes, so it is good for diabetes, kidney stones, it lowers your cholesterol. It is also good to fight pancreatic cancer. And then it's good for your skin, weight loss, and, you know, it can even eradicate liver toxins as well. Yeah, it acts as a liver tonic, and it is a... It, it's good for your uh, digestion, it is a carbohydrate and it also has a good, it's a good source of vitamin K. And you know, if your mother is a Pakistani, she can probably make the yummiest uh, My mother pima karela as well. And then there's those, you know, you, you tie okay. something on the karelas and then you fill in something. But you know, if you're going to have them just raw, they're mm. very bitter. Please make mm. sure that you do have plenty of water right next to you because otherwise... You're just going to be sad. Exactly. That's what and you know, I've just noticed a very big difference when Shazad's on the show, and I'm going to tell him later. And we'll be talking about it tomorrow. Do you log on to Facebook fan page? Which is with the name of World This Morning. Our Twitter page. World This Morning without a G. Our Daily Motion and YouTube page. World This Morning and yeah, World This Morning. And the repeat is that? <laughs> it's going to be at 5 past 11 p.m. But oh, you know, the producer saying something. Are we totally ignoring him, or we just no, do it? No, no, he's talking about the vegetables. Oh, but so we we're do fine. it. We we just do it intentionally. It's no, we don't right. say that. Like, no, no, we don't. We love you. Okay. And anyway, have a good day, and we'll see you bright and early tomorrow. Look after yourself. One, two, three. Good, good morning. morning. Thank you very much.